I think it's very important that this is the um, uh, last topic of the day because what will happen in t on table is that you're so uh, into repairing the meniscus that you'll forget that there's no point repairing it unless in the race of biomechanical stability versus healing, healing wins. However strong your construct, if your healing doesn't happen, it's going to re-tear. And Dr. Patrick was just mentioning, we were discussing a few cases which fail of ours in spite of all our knowledge. So I'll try to share what I've learned over the years to make sure that in the race, the biology wins over biomechanics. So this is a, again a slide which all of us will keep sharing. What's important to understand here is these two fibers and their orientation. So circumferential fibers are oriented along the axis and these radial fibers are like bridges holding the circumferential fibers together. So what's important, the first thing in biology is to make sure that you use this to your advantage. You make sure that you create a strong construct, vertical mattress, such that the biology gets a good scaffold to heal. So if it's a weak bio, if, if it's a weak biomechanics, biology will not be able to surpass. And I'll show you some tear patterns where you can create good healing environment even if there is a tear along the radial fibers which are holding it. So uh, what, what's important in the, in the microanatomy is that the inner part of the meniscus is less vascular. It is more cartilage-like. It's very mo much more thick and it is type 2 collagen whereas the outer part is type 1 collagen and has got good vascularity. So your, all your efforts of biology are for the tears which are absolutely essential to repair and they are in the inner part of the meniscus which God has not made per se to heal well. So how do we go about doing that for such tears? Uh, we just discussed this. The idea of biology is to make sure that you create an environment or a poke hole in such a way that this vascularity seeps in. We hope that this vascularity seeps in. We know about the zone of the tears at the end of the session very well. Now this is a nice image which covers up all the tear patterns. So vertical longitudinal tear, red white zone, red red zone, create a vertical strong construct, presence of ACL will heal well. Problem comes when it's a complex tear or a radial tear which is in uh, uh, starting from the white zone but extending all the way to the red zone or the red white zone and in a young adult or a discoid meniscus with a complex tear pattern which is starting off in the white zone. Uh, and obviously a bucket handle tear in the red white zone in a young adult which you want to make sure heals well. So problem never happens in the peripheral tears and especially doesn't happen in the presence of ACL. Problem is when you have an isolated tear in a young adult with these tear patterns which are not willing to heal. So those are the ones which we need to. Just one thing about the truck analogy which Dr. Patrick mentioned. Just remember that when there are two tires, there is a load distribution. However, if there is one tire, there is a load concentration and therefore there is stress and the meniscus are unable to function as shock absorbers and that leads to early wear and tear. And this wear and tear, especially on the lateral side, you need to be very careful in our population, in any population for that matter, preserve the lateral meniscus 100% whenever possible because these are the young girls who, who if you land up doing a meniscectomy, they'll have degeneration very soon. You, know, you need a biomechanically strong construct and you need a biologically favorable vascular response. So you want the vascularization, you want the cell recruitment and you want to control the inflammation that sets in. Just remember this slide because you might have tricks for vascularization, you might have tricks for cellular recruitment but for these white zone tears you need to reduce the inflammation also. And I'll tell you how the newer orthobiologics are helping for the same. We've just went through this. I won't go through it again. Vertical matter sutures is the way to go. Now, enhancing the vascularity, the first thing is rasping. So have a good rasp. Rasp the synovial surface first, then the meniscal surface. The meniscus has got two surfaces, the capsular surface and its body surface. So both. Now, so why synovium? Because it creates a cellular response. Now, this is something which has to be stressed a lot because you will not be otherwise doing it. So synovium, rasp it thoroughly, meniscus, both meniscus surfaces, the capsular side and its body side. That is the first thing. Next thing is you use it, you use it, uh, that's the synovial rasping which I wanted to stress upon. Next thing is use your trifine. So you can use a microfracture owl and penetrate the meniscus all the way up to the capsule to stimulate the blood vasculature to come from the perimeniscal vascular plexus. You can use your inside out needle, you can get an isolated needle without a suture and you can use those to create poke holes, create as many poke holes which you feel is important. This is a ramp lesion, again I am using the rasp and then I am coming in with my shaver in reverse mode with the suction off. 
it's very important you do this also now this is the meniscus surface and i wanted to show this video because you need to also do on the capsular surface so shaver reverse mode suction off and you got a good healing surface now what this all works well if it's in conjunction with acl but what about in cases when there's a radial tear poor meniscal tissue or it's a red white zone tear now for example you are dealing with a poor degenerative early degenerative root so here you create transosseous tunnels and that's why i'm a big f uh, fan of transosseous tunnels and not anchor technique because the tunnel itself will give in the vascularity for your root to heal at the surface you also create like uh, uh, bupesh showed a centralization stitch because then it creates that strong environment for the uh, meniscus to heal and the stable environment for the meniscus to heal sometimes you will encounter these radial tears going through and through you need to know what is called as a hashtag configuration or a rebar configuration so that's the centralization stitch which creates a stable repair and then your transosseous tunnel will help you in uh, healing the meniscus uh, well this is the uh, radial tear mid body one of the cases which uh, dr patrick showed so you create a transosseous tunnel in the tibia again the tunnel these are there are two tunnels here so one at the back one in the front the front meniscus tissue, uh, uh, sutures are pulled into the back and the back into the front so this again gives you two tunnels which gets the vascularity in and then you create your hashtag configuration with inside out stitches so the take home message is biology biomechanics both have to be strong to create a good healing environment so that's the hashtag configuration which gives you a very strong uh, biomechanical construct so these work as rip stop stitches so one of the direction stitches are trying to rip off the other direction stitches are trying to hold it that's the concept make sure that you do not scuff the cartilage this is a small trick use your hook probe to elevate the meniscus use your inside out devices etc to lift the meniscus up to in order to penetrate the capsule perfectly sometimes you might find it difficult and you might pass it blindly so through one of the portals you can use the hook probe to lift the meniscus up the next thing is notch plasty especially if it's an isolated meniscus repair so just above the acl insertion on the uh, condyle you can use your shaver or a burr but preferably a shaver so that you don't take out unnecessarily amount of bone so you could do a notch plasty you then come with your micro fracture all do a bone marrow stimulation you can use a simple owl this is the older technique or you can use what is called as a power pick now so that's the nice bone marrow vents that you create you can see the fat globules coming in you can use the power pick which is a, a device which goes on to your shaver and you can create these nice puncture holes again about 3 mm apart you need to you need to make sure that they don't coalesce they don't coalesce and create a big uh, defect out there and this goes in oscillating mode so there is no necrosis that happens that's the principle of bone marrow stimulation and you will see that you can create many such puncture holes which is the advantage with the power pick and you can see the Uh, blood circulation when you turn the suction off so if you see the when you turn the suction on you can see the uh, blood flow coming in so you're sure that you've created a huge healing environment for your meniscus the next thing is fibrin clot this is a trick which you need to have in your kitty take 50 to 60 cc of blood use a glass beaker with a sintered glass rod or you can use a simple plastic tray with a sintered glass syringe because it creates static forces for the fibrin clot to form you keep stirring it for about 15 20 minutes and you get this sort of a clot it will have lot of rbcs in it so you need to wash it out with saline and then creates a sticky kind of a clot which you can actually cut with your scalpel and create multiple small pieces you need to now know how to shuttle it into the joint so you can use vicral sutures to suture it you can use a plastic transparent cannula and shuttle it into the defect So this is a video from Dr. Rajkumar Amravati's uh, technique in uh, arthroscopy techniques. You can all go through it. So you pass your fast fix like sutures or your inside out sutures. Do not tension them. Use your plastic cannula. Shove it in with your uh, rod and then tighten your sutures. So your sutures are passed. They are not tensioned. Your fibrin clot goes in. Once you are sure it's gone into the tear, then you tension your sutures. Same principle can be applied with your inside out suture also. uh this is a nice technique where they have actually used meniscus tissue and clubbed it with a fibrin clot so there was a case report where there was a loss of meniscus tissue there was a complete loss of meniscus tissue in the middle of the meniscus they nibbled out some tissue they placed it in the middle of the uh, fibrin clot sutured the fibrin clot used the inside out sutures on either side of the clot to shuttle it and they actually used it to bridge the defect and did follow up arthroscopy to show that there was some amount of healing 
so you need to be innovative in your in your uh, techniques to make sure that you can uh, tackle all situations this is the inside out suture the last thing is you can you can put bone marrow aspirate concentrate or prp because that will get reduce the inflammatory response you remember the first slide that i told you so you need to get biology the cellular response and reduce the inflammatory response and in the newer techniques there is a report of using synovial uh, 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 stem cells so these are the various tricks you can use for improving biology so take home message in the presence of acl you don't need to worry all these tricks are necessary when you are doing isolated meniscus repairs however the biological preparation remains has to be perfect in all type of tears be ready with notch plasty bone marrow stimulation fibrin clot bmac and prp as the available options in our country for these sort of uh, healing thank you